Hey guys, welcome to subtopic 3.6 on amines. This is our first science understanding. Amines are classified as primary, secondary or tertiary. We need to know how to identify, name systematically and draw structural formulae of primary amines containing up to eight carbon atoms in the main chain with side chains limited to a maximum of two carbon atoms as well as one or more amino groups. Amines consist of what we call the amino functional group. This essentially is a nitrogen with a lone pair. The name ends in the suffix amine, and we say that the amino group is polar. This may allow for hydrogen bonding to form between other amines, and it means it can also form hydrogen bonds with water. We can classify amines as primary, secondary, or tertiary. So let's have a look at that now. Primary amines can be defined as amines where the nitrogen is bonded to just one carbon atom or one alkyl group. Secondary amines can be denoted by the nitrogen bonding to two carbon or alkyl groups. And the tertiary amine, we can see the nitrogen bonding to three carbon atoms or three alkyl groups. Let's now look at the naming of amines. So example one, we want to classify the following amines as primary, secondary, or tertiary. And if primary, we need to give the systematic name. So let's start off by identifying our amino group here. And we can see that this nitrogen is bonded to just one carbon atom. So this makes it a primary amine. In terms of the name, we can see that the amino functional group is bonded to a carbon chain with three carbon atoms in the longest chain, so over here. And if we assign this carbon as number one, because it's bonded to the amino group here, then we can see that there is a methyl group on carbon number two. So we could call this a two methyl, propan, given that there's three carbon atoms in the longest chain, one amine because it's bonded to the first carbon. Another way of writing that is two methyl, one propanamine. So putting that number denoting the position of that amino group at the front of the propan. For part B, we've got this particular amine here. We can see this nitrogen is bonded to one, two, three carbon atoms. So this tells us that it is a tertiary amine and we don't need to know how to name for them. For part C, again, let's have a look. We've got this amino group here. It's bonded to one, two hydrogens and in turn it's also bonded to just one hydrogen so this makes it a secondary amine and again like with tertiary we don't need to know how to name so let's go to the next one part d here we can see this amino group here is only bonded to one carbon this makes it primary if we have a look at this amino group here it also is bonded to just one carbon atom so both of these groups are primary but how do we go about naming for amines that have two amino groups. Firstly, we can see that the longest carbon chain consists of three carbon atoms. So this is gonna be a propan amine, but given the fact that there are two amino groups, we are going to call it a propan diamine, and we also need to denote its position. We would associate these amino groups being positioned on carbon number one. Therefore, this amine can be called propan 1,1-diamine, or if we put the numbers at the front, this would be 1,1-propan-diamine. For example two, we're going to look at how to draw structural formulae for a range of amines. For part A, we've got 3-methylbutan-2-amine. Let's start off with the butan part, so this indicates that there are four carbon atoms in the longest chain. Two indicates that there is an amino group on carbon number two, and then we have a methyl group that is positioned on carbon three. So let's have a look at drawing that now. So there we have the structure for 3 methyl 2 amine. Let's also look at the skeletal formula. You may want to pause here and have a go yourself. And so there we've got the skeletal structural formula. Let's have a look at the next example now. This is hexan 1,4-diamine. So this has two amino groups, one position on carbon one, one on carbon four, and hexan indicates that there are six carbon atoms in the longest chain. Maybe pause now, have a go, and then compare with my answer. 
So there we've got the condensed formula. Let's now have a look at the skeletal formula. And there we have the skeletal formula. One example of an amine is methamphetamine. You may commonly hear this being referred to as crystal meth or ice. Um, we can see that it is an amine and more specifically it's a nitrogen bonding to two carbons making it a secondary amine and it's got quite a simple structure here. Now, unfortunately for Australia we actually have the highest use of methamphetamine in the English speaking worlds and one of the largest in any country in the world. Now let's move on to this science understanding. Amines act as bases. Draw the structural formula of the protonated form of an amine given the structural formula of its molecular form and vice versa. Also explain why the protonated form of an amine is more soluble in water than its parent molecular amine. We can say that amines become protonated in acidic solutions. So that's where we have the presence of an excess of H plus or H3O plus. The lone pair of electrons on nitrogen has the ability to accept protons or H plus. What this means effectively is that amines act as bases and more specifically we associate them as weak bases because they do not readily do this. In this diagram we can see that we've got an amine and it doesn't quite matter what groups we have bonding to it. What's important is that lone pair here which is able to help stabilize a proton or a H plus. So we get this bonding of the H plus which helps stabilize the hydrogen but in doing so the nitrogen itself in the amine now becomes positively charged and it's important to note that this is a formal positive charge not a partial charge. This is what we call a protonated amine. Let's now look at an example of how to draw a protonated amine. And we've got here adrenaline, also known as epinephrine. This is often associated with the fight or flight response. And it can be used to help treat cardiac arrest as well as some allergic reactions like anaphylaxis. To draw the protonated form, we just need to identify where the amine or the amino group is. So in adrenaline, I can see that I've got a, an amino group here. So we just need to look at protonating it. The rest of the molecule is going to stay exactly the same. I'm going to now draw the structure of the protonated form. So there's the structure of the protonated amine. And just note that I've shown the tetrahedral shape around that nitrogen atom that has become protonated. Um, this is our formal positive charge that the nitrogen has now. For a second example, we've got lidocaine here, which is typically used as a local anesthetic. So the first thing to do is identify our amino group. And at first you might think there might be two here, but that's not correct. This nitrogen is part of a much bigger group, which is called an amide. So we're going to put that aside. We're going to focus on this nitrogen alone and look at how to protonate this. And so there we have the protonated form of lidocaine. Specifically, we can see this amino group has become protonated. We can see it has this tetrahedral shape and it's gained that positive charge from the protons in solution. Now, if we look at comparing the solubility of amines versus their protonated forms, we can consider the fact that protonated amines are ions. This means that they are going to be more water soluble than their parent amine. This is because they form strong iron diaper bonds with water. This is quite similar to how we saw how carboxylate salts and carboxylate ions are also able to form iron diaper bonds with water in our unit of work on carboxylic acids. This is in comparison to the amines, which can only form hydrogen bonding, which is going to be weaker. So we can see in our first diagram that we've got just a typical amine. We've got a hydrogen here from the amine that is forming hydrogen bonds with water. This is going to be weaker than this attraction here, which is an iron dipole bond, because it's between a nitrogen with a formal positive charge with a polar water molecule 
and specifically it's the partial negative end of water. So this helps explain why protonated amines are going to be more water soluble than their amine counterparts. That concludes 3.6 on amines. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.